What's going on, smart people? This is a square. This <laughs> Off to a good start. This is a circle. Uh, and everyone knows that the area of a circle can be represented as some weird constant pi times the square of its radius, where this is the radius. And what I'm interested in doing today is finding out how to approximate this weird value pi. And there's many ways of doing this. You can do this with power series. You can do this by taking one of those bendy rulers and measuring a circle, and then taking the ratio between its circumference and its radius. Uh, but we're going to do this in a slightly different way, and we're going to do it numerically. Before we start doing a little coding, I want to show the thought process behind it first. And the first step to do this is I'm going to put this circle inside of a square. So here is one side, other side, other side, other side. Clean up these edges. Very nice. And let's go ahead and put some coordinate axes on here. Here's Y, and here is X. Cool. And we're going to center this at zero. Uh, so let's just, just to keep everything notationally different, let's make sure that this is the area of a circle and then the area of a square is just its length times its width. But the width of this square is just going to be the same thing as twice its radius. And the same goes for the height. So the area of the square is equal to 2 times the radius times 2 times the radius, which is equal to 4 r squared. Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the area of the uh, circle divided by the area of the square. So AC divided by AS is equal to pi r squared divided by 4 r squared. Or, you can, in other words, this is equal to pi over 4. Let's multiply this 4 over and we're going to get a new expression that says that, let's see, where am I looking at with room? I'm going to do it up here, front and west center. <laughs> the pi is equal to 4 times the area of the circle divided by the area of the square. That doesn't look too helpful yet. But what we need to do if we want to tackle this whole what is pi dilemma or approximating pi is we have to define our measuring stick that we're using to define areas. And to do that, what we have to do is we need to discretize our space. And uh, this is going to be, this is what we need to do numerically if we're going to be using computers to solve this. So imagine just slapping all this stuff onto a grid. So we're going to have a whole bunch of lines on a grid, or this whole thing on a grid. And pretend all of these grids are, all these grid lines, all of these little blocks are uniformly spaced out. If we added up all of the, the number of these uh, squares on this grid, what we would get is the area of the square. And that makes sense, right? If we just have a whole bunch of little squares inside of a big square, if we add up the whole number of all of these little squares, what we get is the area of the big square. So what this is telling us is that pi is equal to 4 times all of the squares that are only within the circle divided by the total number of squares. And what this tells us is that we can approximate pi better and better if we have a closer grid, if we have more squares within this grid. In other words, what we could do is we could effectively have like one big dartboard and you can have your blindfolds on and randomly pick a bunch of points on this dartboard. You're just throwing them and you got a bunch landing everywhere. What I'm suggesting is that we can approximate pi to be four times the number of these darts that land in the circle. So let's call that n sub c now because it's just the number of darts that land in the circle divided by the number of darts that land in the total square. Now let's check that this makes sense first before we start tackling this numerically. So n sub s is always going to be at least as big as n sub c, right? If you make it in the circle, you make it inside the square by default. But if you make it out here in this little weird triangle shaped thing, then you're outside of the circle. So this is always going to at least be a fraction. Uh, it, it will, it'll at least be one, but probably less, which tells us that this is at least going to be, or at most going to be four. 
So what I'm saying is, is if we throw a dart and it hits the circle, and we just throw one dart, then our first approximation for pi is that pi is equal to 4. What we're going to be doing is using Python to randomly throw these darts for us and see what it calculates pi to be. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing that I always do whenever I start writing some code in Python is always just importing the necessary libraries. So the first one, I'm going to tell them, I'm going to end up plotting out what we do. So what I need to do is I need to specify that I want the plot to uh, exit the screen so that I can interact with it a little bit. And I just do that by this little percent sign, matplotlib qt5. Yours might be uh, qt4. This is what works for me. And then what am I importing? I'm going to import, I'm going to say from numpy import random. And this is going to give me access to random number generators. You can generate random numbers yourself, or at least pseudo-random numbers, using things like the linear congruent method. But so far as I know, Python works fine for generating random numbers. People spend their lives finding perfect random numbers. It's, that's not too important here. These will do just fine. Uh, then I want to import numpy as np. In, oops. Yeah. Import matplotlib dot pyplot. That's plt. Anything else I need? That should be good. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to keep track of all of my randomly thrown darts that land inside the circle and the total ones. So let's go ahead and specify the total darts that we're going to be throwing. That's going to represent our number that goes inside of the square because we're going to assume we don't go outside of our borders. All of them are at least going to hit the square. It's like we're bowling with the gutters up, or gutter guards. So let's go ahead, let's start out with throwing a thousand darts. N equals one thousand. So this is going to be darts thrown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few lists. So I'm going to create a list to store my x values that are within our circle and our y values that are within our circle and that should be good so let's see I was going to say uh, circle x is just some empty list circle y is equal to some empty list Oops. Okay. and what I'm going to say, I'm going to create a while loop that iterates through all of those ends. So I'm going to throw all of these darts and it's going to stop as soon as I run out of darts. So I'm going to initialize a count. I'm going to start with my first dart, i equals 1. And while this is less than n, so while i is less than or equal to n, so as long as I still have darts to throw, uh, I'm going to create some random x values within the uh, boundaries. So let's put some limits on our x. Let's put some limits on our square. Let's say that our square is centered at the origin, and it goes from negative 1 to 1. And if it's a square, that means that it's going to go from negative 1 to 1 for my y values as well. So I'm going to have it create a random x value. I'm going to call x equal to random dot uniform, negative 1 to 1. And the same goes for y. y is equal to random dot uniform negative one to one okay so this is going to give us each time each time it goes through the while loop it's going to spit us out one random number one random x value between negative one and one and it can be a float so it can be a decimal uh, and the same goes for y and now what I want to do is I want to hold on to those x and y values that are just within the circle so how do we specify whether the value is within the uh, within the boundaries of the circle. Well, what's the equation for a circle? You have we know that x squared plus y squared has to be less than or equal to the radius, right? Then it's within the circle. So if let's say x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to the radius. Now the radius is just going to be one because the length of the, of the square is 2. So if this is true, so if our x and y values are less than that, we want to store them. So circle x dot append uh, x 
and circle y dot append y. There's probably more elegant ways to do this, but this will work. And let's say else, let's create some uh, points for our square. So we'll say square x is equal to just some list, and square y. So this is saying if x squared plus y squared is not less than or equal to 1, I want to square x, square x dot append x, and the same goes for y. So all I'm doing is I'm separating out the x and y values that aren't within the circle and the ones that are just within the square. Okay, and then we need to shift our count, our i, by 1, so that it goes to the next point, our next dart. So I'm going to say i plus equals 1. Great. Okay. So how did we define pi before? We said that pi is equal to 4 times the ratio of the ones that are in the circle divided by the ones that are just in the square. So 4 times the length of the ones that are in the circle. So let's just say circle x divided by the length of, well actually we don't even need this, we can just say divided by n because they're all at least going to be in, in the square. So why am I writing this? Let me explain this real quick. The length of circle x, that's going to be how many entries how many x coordinates we have that are just in this in the circle we could use y but if there's x amount in the x list there's going to be the same amount in the y list because any time that first if statement is is satisfied it depends both so the length of circle x is the same as the length of y that's going to be the number of points okay so that's what we're saying uh, pi is and that shouldn't be indented Cool, so let's let's see what this turns out to be. We can say uh, print pi is approximately comma pi and then let's have a little space print pi actually is comma np dot pi. Let me make sure I defined np. Yeah, I did. Okay. And then let's also plot out what this looks like. So we'll say plt dot plot, uh, let's say circle x, comma circle y, comma, let's do a red, no, let's do a blue dot. So these are going to be all the points that are within the circle. And then we're going to do the same for the ones that are only in the square. PLT dot plot square x comma square y. Let's make these green green dots. Okay. Maybe add some grid lines. And let's take one last look over this. Make sure there's no tomfoolery going on in the background. It looks good. Let's make sure. Okay, so what happened here? plt.plot circle is not defined. Oh, just circle. So we need a y here. Oops. So what happens when you type and code at the same time? Okay, so let's look at that in a minute. Right here it says pi is approximately 3.176. Pi is actually 3.14 5. So this is just the NumPy version of pi. This is what it calculated it to be. And if we look at our points, that looks pretty terrible. And that's because we didn't choose too many points. We didn't throw that many darts for an accurate representation of pi. So let's go ahead and up n by a factor of, say, 100, and see how that helps. So now we're throwing 100,000 darts, and let's see how this helps. 
we get that pi is approximately 3.145 as opposed to 3.1415. And that's the thing with uh, these types of um, Monte Carlo-esque approximations with this is that if you need another decimal of accuracy, you typically need another order of points thrown, at least for this stuff. Uh, if we look at this graph, it looks a little bit elliptic, and that's just because the height is different from the width. So you see if we minimize this and we try to make this a bit more square-like about there, we get pretty much a perfect circle. Okay, and just for, for giggles, let's see what happens if we use like a million. You can do it. Yeah, see we got another order of accuracy 3.141 as a point to as opposed to 3.145 and we get pretty much a perfect circle here. Okay? And we see little a little blob right here. That's just because I said that uh if it's less than or equal to r. So it's letting it be 1. So these are the ones that just fit the bill. The rest are less. Cool. And that'll do it for this video. We got pi to three decimal places, I think, which is nothing really to write home about. But it, as I said, if you increase n, you can get better and better approximations. And you can also use this method of Monte Carlo to do things like numerical integration, which we might get into a little bit later if people want to see that. Let me know in the comments section how far you are able to approximate pi if you went along with this method. And I'll see you guys there.